Okay, hi, this is Elia Fisherman, and welcome to our uh, monthly quiz. So I'm going to show you, I think, eight cases. They're all GI cases. I hope you'll like them. Here's a patient with weight loss, and what you can see in this case is, yes, there's a duodenal lipoma, but this area in the distal bowel, it's kind of thickened. Probably it's five centimeters in length and about a centimeter plus in thickness. Now, you could consider the possibility of inflammatory bowel disease. It doesn't quite look like Crohn's, but something inflammatory. But you also have to think about malignancy. You could see it a bit easier on the coronal and the volume rendered views. You see that lipoma, by the way, but there's a mass here. It's not obstructing. I got to think about a tumor. So then I go through what tumors, adenocarcinoma, small bowel, lymphoma, doesn't quite look like a gist, metastasis can be many different appearances. Um, benign things, it's not like any benign tumor I could think of, doesn't really look like inflammatory bowel disease. You have to be suspicious. It's mass-like and this was an adenocarcinoma, okay? Think about that for a second as I show you the next case. Here there's a large mass and when you first look at it, is this, is this lumen or ulceration? Is this all one lobular mass like a giant sarcoma or something? There's no small bowel obstruction. When you look at it in the coronal view, that stomach, this is what we're seeing and that air was in the lumen. This is a markedly bulky tumor. It looks almost in the same location as the prior case. But compared to the prior case, it's longer, but more importantly, it's bulkier. And when you go back to the next image, it's really bulky beyond the bowel. So you say to yourself, malignancy, very bulky, lots of thickening. But on the other hand, it's not obstructing. If it was a carcinoma this big, I never saw a carcinoma this big, it would surely be obstructing bowel. Just tumor this big, probably as well. It doesn't have the look of a carcinoid. <coughs> Excuse me. But again, the thought... What else could it be? Well, small bowel tumor, very bulky. B-cell lymphoma is a great possibility, and that's what this indeed was. Okay, another case. Low hematocrit abdominal pain. There's some thickening of the right colon, but then there's something particularly true in the patient's cecal region. It's bulky. First thing I would say, adenocarcinoma. Does it look inflammatory? You could think about things that are inflammatory from TB to colitis, many things. But if you start looking at this and the coronal as well, it looks like it's solid, it's mass effect. The most common mass I think about is not gonna be a MET, though it could be like melanoma, but it's gonna be a primary adenocarcinoma. If you look, there's also a thought here, is there some involvement of the ileum or is it possibly obstructed? If you have a sequel mass, but it appears to involve the ileum also, you've got to think about lymphoma. Occasionally, carcinomas will obstruct the ileum, but usually it doesn't grow into it. You could also see this patient had nodes, but the presence of nodes in a tumor can be many, many different things. The nodes aren't all that impressive. They're abnormal, but not really bulky. This was biopsied, and to everyone's surprise was B-cell lymphoma. You're getting the theme here, right? That I may be showing you some cases of lymphoma. And I have a talk coming in about six weeks or so, a two-parter on GI lymphoma, speaking about stomach, small bowel, and colon. Another patient, large right lower quadrant mass. Could it be an abscess with a perforation? Yes. But if it was a perforation, it probably was an underlying tumor. Again, you think about a colon cancer. There's no free air but it's large and bulky and it extends toward and appears to involve the patient's terminal ileum as well. There's really no mesenteric nodes or anything else. A very nice look at this on the cinematic rendering as well. So you then ask the question, what are we probably dealing with? Could be the world's biggest or a real bulky adenocarcinoma, but you also got to think about lymphoma, metastasis or a thought perhaps, not the greatest thought. This ended up being B-cell lymphoma of the cecum, a really classic case. What about this case? Now, at first glance, you say, aha, you're showing me another, um, another small bowel tumor, because this could be small bowel, it could be jejunum perhaps, but when you look at all the images, this is the stomach. 
what gives you a bulky lesion like that with ulceration, particularly sagittal view, stomach? Just tumors can be very large. They can ulcerate. They can be bulky. Adenocarcinomas can be large, but I think this is too large for an adenocarcinoma. There's not a lot of nodes present. Could this be a metastasis? We've seen metastatic melanoma. Well, biopsy, this was lymphoma as well. Now you've seen gastric lymphoma, small bowel lymphoma, as well as large bowel lymphoma. Another case, GI bleeding, there's an infiltrating process, fourth portion of duodenum, it's enhancing, and there are nodes in the mesentery, or mass in the mesentery. Yes, this could be a lymphoma. You can see this prominent vascularity in the lesion. It's enhancing, and you have the mass in the mesentery, nodes perhaps. Again, think about carcinoma. Got to throw in lymphoma. Not the greatest for a GIST tumor. When you look at some other images, you see the portal vein to SMV, and the SMA is occluded. That explains a lot of the collateral vessels because this collateral is due to the occlusion of the SMV. There are multiple nodes in the mesentery with somewhat of a desmoplastic reaction, and that makes you think about, and there's also a stricture here in the colon. Could this be inflammatory? I guess so, but I'm not sure what I'd pick for that. But when you see cutoff of vessels, when you see mass and mesentery, small bowel involvement, desmoplastic reaction, here's the collateral vessels really nicely shown on the volume rendering involving fourth portion of duodenum. This was a carcinoid tumor. We think about carcinoids as masses in the bowel, but this is a good example of a carcinoid encasing bowel. The mesenteric masses are the desmoplastic reaction. Another patient with abdominal pain, and you see a mass in the mesentery. Okay, so now you're going to say, you showed me a carcinoid. This is cystic. Carcinoids usually aren't cystic. Maybe you want to show me a benign thing like sclerosing mesenteritis, but they often calcify 70% of the time. Maybe you want to show me lymphoma. Lymphoma can have necrotic components in the mesentery, necrotic nodes. But lymphoma, necrotic nodes are usually post-therapy. So now you say there's a mass in the mesentery, what could it be? Well, it could be metastatic disease like a germ cell tumor. That's a possibility. There's some thickening of bowel. Then if I ask you the question, what gives you nodes in the mesentery that are low CT attenuation? You then say to yourself, there's a strange thing called Whipple's disease. We almost never see that, but you mention it. And then there's MAI infection and TB. Here the vessels all look good. Again, you got to be thinking still about malignancy, necrotic nodes. Biopsy on this case was then done, and it was nodes that was somewhat cystic. The patient had tuberculosis. So again, low density nodes, MAI, TB, commonly looks like a neoplasm, though the vessels were preserved. Things like carcinoid are usually vascular, and there's a desmoplastic reaction, so the vessels look irregular. So. A very nice case. And I think I have one more, right lower quadrant pain. Patient presented with GI bleed, you can see some of the enhancement. And then you see the bleeding, and there's a mass here in the cecum. There it is here, kind of looks dumbbell. A mass bleeding, colon cancer. Not bulky enough for lymphoma, but I gave you a bunch of lymphomas. I guess I gotta throw that back in there, just to be careful. But what else could it be? Carcinoid tumor? Not a bad location. Terminal ileum, cecum, desmoplastic reaction. Carcinoids don't commonly bleed, but they are a source of bleeding. And this was a carcinoid by the ileocecal valve region, dumbbell-shaped, presenting with GI bleeding. Great case. So with that, I've shown you a bunch of great cases. I hope you learned something. Again, I'll be coming back with several lectures over the next couple months on lymphoma specifically on the GI tract, so that may help you. We posted a bunch of uh, pearls on GI lymphoma in the August and September uh, pearl section and teaching files. So, a lot to learn, and I hope you have a great day.